the map of Pittsburgh. This is my first ever job. Hey everyone, it's Haley Steinfeld here, and I am doing Breakdown Breakdown with Cosmo. I'm just gonna say it. I like you. Mm. I liked you for months. Mm -hmm. I think about you every second. I don't know, maybe I even love you. Wow. You're so complicated. But simple, and I just feel this connection between us. This isn't my current situation by any means. I want to feel you inside Wow. Me. We can do it in the Petland stock room. I forgot how uh, forward this message was, Nadine. Girl, um, this is by far one of my favorite, well, one of my favorite roles I've ever played, but this scene particularly this. was very fun because I think we've all Shh. been there. Oh my God. Accidentally set, oh my sent. God, no way, no, no, no. In this case, a very raunchy and inappropriate and forward text message to a person that we uh, ultimately want to see, but I don't know, very confusing time, but um, it's all, it's, it's happened to us all, right? We've sent an email to a person that we were like, you know, complaining about, and it was supposed to go to somebody else and it went to that person. I don't know, it's happened. This was very fun to shoot though. Right after that message is sent, we did so many versions of the reaction and of the freak out. I felt like I was given so much freedom uh, to kind of do anything and everything, and that resulted in just like the most chaotic of responses. So much fun and so freeing to just like let loose and freak out. The world feels like it's literally coming to an end and you have no idea how to recover from this and then suddenly everything you've ever been upset about in your life is like triggering you and it's just a, a full on nervous breakdown. Edge of 17 for me was like a moment to just like release any bit of teen angst that had ever been inside of me. Aww. This is the shit. Oh no. <laughs> hey. I don't think I've seen this since I made this. I believe I was 15 when I made this. And I would say, I mean, this is an iconic scene in Romeo and Juliet. And I feel like I had a big red circle around this scene in the script because it was like that hill to climb. But we got there and we did it and I had an amazing scene partner in Douglas Booth. It was very emotional. I mean, we were in the most beautiful setting and in the most gorgeous costumes and we had an amazing Italian crew and everybody was just really wonderful and supportive because it was one of those moments that like called for as much support and understanding and patience as, as you could possibly get. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I have come to take you back to Fort Smith. Listen. Well, where will I go? If you refuse to go, I'll have to shoot you. Oh my god. Oh. Well, you okay, so. Two things. The water was freezing. Second, the coat that I'm wearing, I kid you not, weighed, I believe, from like seven to 10 pounds. This thing was so heavy. You can see that I'm like swaying in this scene. And I think I remember, I recall it being from like me being freezing and like trying to like, I don't know if it was like a, a an unconscious thing that I was doing to like stay warm. But I remember like my arms being so tired from holding the gun up and, and the coat being so heavy. And I think it was just like a, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm definitely swaying and I, I, I I've done that in other, <laughs> in other scenes, which is so funny because I like made myself aware of it recently and here I am watching my 14 year old self do it then. That film will always hold a very special place in my heart. That was a wild one. I was swimming in the water with horses. I actually found out after that there were water snakes in this particular lake. I was told once I made it to the other side, we only had to do one take, which, um, probably best that they did tell me after the fact because yeah, I don't think it would have, I don't think it would have happened. <gasps> this is my first ever job. Oh my God. Well, thank you. When you do it right, it does look easy. I bet I could do it. Okay, first of all, somebody needed to give this girl a haircut. Can we have today's weather cast and the teleprompter up here? Okay. Oh man, I worked so hard to remember these lines. Well, the rain is continuing here in most of western Calo. Pennsylvania with a stubborn low pressure wait, system. Wait. That means the low-lying regions have an increased possibility of flooding, particularly around the Monongahela River. Now, listen. As 
Return to the front door. <laughs> okay, that's enough, that's enough. But I didn't finish. Oh no, you're done, sweetie, you're done. <laughs> Apart from a, a few student films that I had done and a couple commercials, this was like my first big role. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember pulling up to the lot, having my trailer and my name on the trailer, and I definitely have that photo. I mean, my mom has that photo somewhere of me just like, here I am at my trailer with my character's name on the door, and it just was such a surreal moment. And then uh, we shot it in front of a live audience, which I had never, obviously, I had never experienced any of it before, but that was like, what an element. That whole live element is just so, it keeps you so alive and so on your toes, and it's like freezing cold in the on the stage, which I will never forget, it was so cold. I mean, this was like my first, my first gig. So I was very excited and very like over eager to just like show up and be prepared, but I had a great time. It was, it was really fun. I love you, and I felt you library because you're always with me i can't escape from you because the only true thing i will ever feel is my love for you <laughs>my scenes as emily dickinson with sue gilbert are some of my favorite i've ever gotten to act in they have the most complicated beautiful messy situation, relationship uh, that I have ever played through. Uh, probably one of the most beautiful and tragic ones that I, I know. What's so awesome about this relationship between the two of them um, throughout our show, these two characters grow so much together. And I watch this and I get so excited about season three and what the fans are gonna get, because if they're at all a fan of this, they're gonna love what's to come. My process to prepare for a character, it, it um, it varies. With someone like Emily Dickinson, I was so lucky to have enough information about her that is known to be true. Her poetry, which is the reason we're all in love with her um, and the reason we have a show. To have that and to have that as the driving force and to have that as any point of reference at any given time is just like a miracle. So having that, knowing that, studying her and taking all of that into this show was a huge part of my, my process uh, with this character, but what was so fun is, you know, from the very beginning we set out to make a show unlike any Dickinson related story that you had ever seen before. So I was also really excited to kind of step in and, and make it my own in that sense and take the unbelievable poetry that is hers and, and um, run wild with it really. I don't normally love watching myself, but I have to say I feel like you guys went really deep and pulled from a long time ago, so I'm far enough removed from it that I, I don't know that it bothered me so much, but uh, I probably won't uh, watch these again until Cosmo, you uh, make me do it again. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and um, I'm excited for you to see my cover.